Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm very excited to showcase a, a highly anticipated feature, which is our API branches, uh, which is a way to version your API. Uh, so branches is basically a way where you can make a copy of your all your business logic in your Xano workspace, which includes your API endpoints, uh, your background tasks or cron jobs, uh, your add-ons and your custom functions. Uh, so you can make a copy of these and go ahead and test and develop and add new ones um, while not affecting your live version of all your business logic. And when you're ready to um, switch to the branch that you've been testing and developing, uh, it's as easy as a single click. So it's a really awesome solution. Um, it's kind of similar to having different environments, if you will. Um, but this is having different API branches um, to easily switch back and forth from. Uh, so let's get started and let's take a look. So you'll see in my workspace here, um, I'm just in my API, but here in my left navigation bar, uh, you can see I have this branch and it says V1. So you'll always start out on uh, V1 or version one of your branch. If I just go ahead and uh, click on this right here, we can see this window on the right opens up. Uh, it tells us what branches are. Um, it's important to note that this is different than uh, data source environments, um, which you can go ahead and see our solution for that. Um, branches is strictly going to be your business logic. So once again, your APIs, functions, add-ons, and tasks. Um, we also have our documentation linked to that. Um, so right now you can see there is uh, the original branch, V1. We can simply go ahead and add a new branch. Um, if your branch names are incrementing, Xana will automatically go to the next incrementing value, but you can also rename your uh, existing branch label here. You could say um, something like example, but I'll just go ahead, I'll write V2 for now. You can also select your source branch. So say you have many branches, but maybe you wanna make a copy of a previous branch um, to develop on a new branch. You can always do that. I just have one branch right now, so it's just gonna be V1. I'll go ahead and create that. Um, and when I do that, I'm taking into this editing mode of branch two. And you can see right here on the top, it says editing branch V2, uh, while API requests are going to V1. So that's just signifying our live API there. Um, you can go ahead and either select here on the left side, you can see it's in yellow. That's just signifying I'm editing a non-live branch. Um, you can also hit configure here. Um, I'll go ahead, I'll add one new branch here. You can see now I can choose from those different source branches. Um, actually, let's just keep it at V2 for now. I won't actually create this one. Um, so now here, if I jump to my API, um, you can see I have an exact copy of my API endpoints um, from uh, my source branch, which was V1. So you'll also notice uh, this notice here for your documentation. This is the links below contains references to this branch. Uh, since they're not live, if you want to get links for your uh, the ones that your customers use, then switch back to your live branch. So basically the base URL you're gonna get here, the Swagger documentation and these links while you're in these uh, branch editing mode are gonna be linked directly to that um, branch. So for example here, um, as you can see in my base URL after my canonical here, so my canonical is this API semicolon and then um, this canonical here, there's this other semicolon here that says uh, V2. And so that means I'm on branch V2. Um, if we open my Swagger documentation, it'll be the same thing. You can see that's V2 there. Um, if I wanted to simply switch back to V1, I could just erase that V2, hit enter, and now you'll see this, this would actually be my live Swagger documentation. Um, but so back to Xano here, let's go ahead. I'm gonna jump into this API endpoint. So for example here, if I go ahead and run this, um, you can see I'm just getting some categories. Let's see here while I'm editing, I wanna actually go ahead and uh, create an add-on. And I'm just gonna do this quickly. We don't need to go through add-ons, but I'll just add this um, items add-on here because we have different items that belong to different categories. I'll just go ahead and save this. Um, and now when I run this, you can see we have this data with this add-on. So if I actually went ahead and copied this endpoint URL and just put it in my browser, um, you can see we get this response and here is my add-on, right? 
So if I wanted to, let's say, go look at our live one, there's a couple ways I could do that. First, I could switch back here um, and go to editing mode of this branch. And you'll notice that that banner at the top goes away. And my branch is uh, this kind of blue or purple here, meaning that this is my live branch. Let's go ahead and jump to my API here. And let's go ahead and grab this category uh, API endpoint, which I just edited on um, branch two. And I'll open up a new tag and just paste that in. Here you can see I have uh, no add-on in there, right? So when I jump back to my response here uh, with V2, you can see here's my add-on, right? So what's really cool is once we want to uh, simply uh, set that live V2, so if I want to go ahead and just set that live, now that live URL will all of a sudden have that add-on in there. So if we go back here to my response that didn't have an add-on, uh, because this is the live URL, if you will, if I simply hit refresh here, and I know you can't see my address bar, but now we'll have uh, my live add-on, which is my branch two, which now includes that add-on. So that's really, really awesome. Uh, super easy to switch back and forth. We can keep creating new branches. Once again, you can choose um, the source branch um, and you can just keep growing and developing and testing uh, different branches without affecting those live API endpoints that your users might be using. Um, one more thing I wanna point out about um, branches is that um, background tasks or cron jobs, if you will, only um, background tasks on your live branch will run. Um, we do that for a number of reasons, so there's not conflicting ones. So you can develop, uh, if you're developing a background task on another branch, you can have that not affecting um, your, basically your live data and whatnot, um, or if it is going to be clashing with your live background task. So um, only background tasks on a live branch will actually be the ones that run. So that's gonna wrap it up for branches. Um, remember, whatever branch you're on, your different links and documentation is going to reference that link. So you can either navigate back to your live branch to grab those URLs of your live branch, um, or you can simply get rid of the um, colon and the branch name that is in the URL. Um, as you can see, your live branch will never actually have that. One more time, if I switch back to uh, V1 here, if we go to edit branch and I go to API, um, you can see this one has that's that colon and that V1, um, which references that branch name. Um, so once again, very easy to switch back and forth between these different branches. You can even think of them sort of like environments, but a uh, little bit different of a solution. Remember, each branch is going to be a cop exact copy of the time you make that coffee copy from that source branch. Um, and I think that's it. You know, this is going to be a really awesome solution uh, for Xano and really help you guys to be able to test new ideas. Um, and develop new API endpoints and business logic without affecting uh, what your live users are doing. Um, so with that, thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.